I'm Dr. Marcelina Jasmine Silva. I go by Jasmine. Um, I'm a physician. I'm board certified in family medicine and osteopathy. I'm also board certified in pain and addiction. Um, most of my clinical work has been done in a program called the Footsteps Program, the Focus on Opioid Transitions Program. And this was a multidisciplinary program that ran um, uh, right before COVID, where we um, helped people who were on full mu agonist opioid therapy for their chronic pain cease that opioid therapy. If they weren't feeling satisfied with their pain results and with their functional limitations. Um, and we combined uh, multiple different disciplines to create a very successful program. And part of what we employed in that program was yoga and mindfulness along with the medication management. Your talk also highlights data uh, from your study on the cessation of chronic opioid analgesic therapy. So we have yoga here playing a role, but it looks like other interventions include acupuncture and pain coping skills. I just wanted to see if you could elaborate a little bit more on this study, maybe at a high level, the results and their impact. So uh, yeah, the, the Focus on Opioid Transitions Program, or Footsteps, was a program that, uh, that included a robust amount of multidisciplinary approaches. And, and the, the idea behind this was to try to address the multiple facets of pain with several different disciplines. Uh, and also to try to you know, use the logic that if chronic toxic stress leads to chronicity, chronic pain, to um, to multiple pharmaceuticals being used, maybe we can imbue some resiliency and pain coping um, to try to reverse some of this chronicity while we are also changing medications. You know, the, the studies have been very clear from multiple sources that when you start taking away medications, if you don't if you don't leave any other tools or include or add any other tools behind, then people suffer physically and outcomes on a public health level and on an individual level are poor um, and it's even more expensive for insur insurance companies. So we brought together several different disciplines, um, yoga included, mindfulness, cognitive behavioral therapy, acupuncture, to help assist with the medication change and try to also then structure um, some coursework around pain coping. And we had some really amazing results. We had our patients for 10 weeks, and we had patients using up to 600 morphine milliequivalents a day. And we were able, throughout the course of our program, which ran for two years, we had a 90% success rate of helping people cease their full mu agonist opioids. Um, and these were people who'd been on them for decades and people who just were not happy with their level of pain control and their level of function. And we did a look back period of up to two years to see who was able to maintain those successes. Did it stick? Did it matter? Um, and of our successful patients, 97% maintained the results for up to two years. And so I really, I really attribute our results, sure, to medication changes, but mostly to the resiliency building skills of which yoga and mindfulness was an important part. So the results of that particular study, it seems to focus on patients with the sort of chronic non-cancer pain and they're on opioids. Uh, but how would this apply to patients who are maybe not on opioids? Maybe those who have less severe pain so that it doesn't warrant opioids, maybe those who are avoiding opioids. Do the techniques and strategies kind of translate over the same? Is there some level of adaptation or modification? Yeah, they, um, the techniques are the same. You know, pain is so subjective. It doesn't matter how how severe the physical, you know, diversion um, an injury might be from like anatomical perfection. Someone might be experiencing severe or mild pain. Someone might be experiencing severe pain and not have access to opioids. Um, you know, the whole experience is so subjective, but bottom line is moving your body um, in a way that's safe, that, that uh, encourages physical conditioning, emotional conditioning, resiliency building, that's helpful for everyone who is either in pain, um, severe or mild, and also to help be sort of pain preventative, you know, injury prevention. So um, the overall thesis of what I have to say, and it doesn't even matter if I'm talking about yoga or, or anything else in medicine, is that in healthcare, we should provide healthcare. And we should provide access for people to, to seek wellness and wellness creating tools. But often what we're doing is scanning for and then reacting to chronic disease. And so we're providing sick care. But 
you know, my, my philosophy is that what we should be doing is providing healthcare both for disease prevention, for wellness propagation, and also for chronic disease and chronic pain management.